Hey everyone, this is Callie. Thanks so much for being here with me today. We're creating a fun galaxy spinner card today. So we'll be doing some Copic coloring as well as some ink blending to show you how I made that galaxy background. To get started here, I'm stamping the images that I wanna use and I was very intentional about choosing four animals as well as four landscape style images to have perfect spacing all around this globe that I'm coloring now. So for the globe, I saw one of the MFT design team members color this in a way that kind of looks like a satellite image of the world, you know, with the textures of the mountains and stuff. So I thought that was really neat and I wanted to imitate that. So what I'm doing is flooding the entire land portions of the globe first with a light green and then going in with a medium green to kind of shade in just the center portion. So we're kind of coloring backwards here and I'm dotting with the darkest green to create that texture and then I'm going to go back and forth between the medium and the dark to kind of dot and create more of that texturized look on the land portions of this globe. And for the water I'm just using a very light blue with the darkest shade I'm going to outline just the globe and then I'll go in with a medium shade and outline around the globe as well as all the continents and then I'll flood the entire image with the lightest shade of blue that I've chosen. All right, so now on the images that are gonna go around the spinning portion of the globe, very quick coloring. These images are so small, so there's not a whole lot of blending to do. So I am just gonna color very quickly, sometimes two, sometimes three, depending on the size of the area. And I even skipped the highlighting that I normally do with a white gel pen because these images are so small. So I want to briefly mention here that this technique is from Jennifer McGuire. She did some spinner cards back before during the holiday with some holiday products and it was so cool. And when I saw this stamp set, I knew what I wanted to create with it. And of course, Jennifer McGuire had already done a video on spinner cards. So I definitely learned a few things from her video to create this card. So we have that earth die and I'm just going to use the nested circles from Simon Says Stamp to find a die that's just slightly bigger than that one and that way I can adhere all of these images after die cutting and coloring them to that round circle that I just cut using white cardstock. This is going to be the portion of our card that actually spins. So right now I am just spacing out all of the images and I'm using the grid mat there. I've centered my circle and I'm just adding the four landscape pieces first on the north, south, west, and east ends, and then I'll fill in the rest of the gap with the animals that I've colored. And again, that creates perfect spacing for this spinner piece. And then we can just set that aside to dry. And just for looks, I just wanted to show you what that globe is gonna look like right over that. Okay, so now we're gonna create our galaxy background. There are so many ways to do galaxy backgrounds. I recently did a watercolor one, but this time I'm gonna use Distress Oxides. You can also use Distress Inks or any inks that you might have. I just love Distress Oxides because they blend together nicely. For this, I recommend choosing two to three really bright, vibrant colors. And what I've chosen today is Wilted Violet, some Mermaid Lagoon, as well as some Picked Raspberry. And what you'll see is a big mess at first. What I'm doing is just putting down globs of color. So I'm just ink blending rounds of colors here and there. And then what we'll do is use a dark blue. This is Chip Sapphire. And I'm just gonna go in between all those colors and all around the edges, and that'll create a darker night sky. And then I'll go back in with the original colors and blend into that dark blue. So you'll see here, I am working my way through and around the car, just covering up all of that white space with this dark blue. And now I'm going back in with that picked raspberry and then the mermaid lagoon, as well as the wilted violet. And I'm just gonna intensify those original colors and blend that into the dark blue. When I'm done working those colors together, I'm gonna make my card even darker by using black soot. And I'm just gonna go around the edges this time. I'm not gonna go into the center of the card. And this will create a nice glow at the center of my card and not take away from the vibrancy of the other colors. Now to give this card more texture, I'm just gonna spray a light mist from about two feet above the card and I'm just gonna spray directly down. That way you get nice even splatters. And to intensify those colors, I'll go in with some white paint as well and splatter some more. And then you'll get this kind of mixed starry sky galaxy feel. And then I'm just gonna set that aside so that we can work on our spinner mechanism. For the mechanism, I have a flat button. As you can see, there's no dome on either side of this button. That's gonna be very helpful when you glue this down. It's gonna keep everything nice and flat. 
and I'm just gonna use a circle die that is just slightly bigger, just big enough to cut and make a well for that button to sit inside. And then we'll need a second die that is gonna be slightly smaller than the original globe image that we colored. I'm using a T-ruler here just to draw myself a guide. It's not perfect, but I thought that this would help me line my dies a little bit better. There are cut marks where I trimmed down or cut apart my dies, so that's gonna help me line up those cut marks and give me even spacing. Probably not necessary, but as I was creating this card, that was my thought process, so it's a part of this video. And then I'll just cut a second one. We wanna butt up the back sides of them together, that way we have the smoother edge of these little discs on the outsides for the spinning to be more smooth. I'm gonna use some liquid adhesive, and again, I'm gonna glue the rough sides together so that we have the smooth edges facing outwards. Now, these discs aren't really necessary. We already have this piece here that I'm gonna cut that small die into to create a spinning portion. I just thought the disc was gonna create a little bit more height and it's gonna be easier for the recipient to catch the images to be able to spin this card. So a little height doesn't hurt and it also makes it a little bit easier to spin the card. So that's gonna fit right into that button very nicely and you can see that it spins smoothly. When we're ready, we're just gonna adhere that globe right over that button. So we'll set that aside, and now that our background is dry, I wanted to prep it with some microglaze. You can skip this step, it's completely not necessary. I just feel that microglaze will help seal those colors in place and give it a waxy feel, but it also makes our background more vibrant. I'm using a round ink blending tool, and as you can see, I kept a domed blending foam inside that microglaze container, that way I can keep reusing the same one. A little bit goes a long way on this, so I have a lot of excess glaze on top of my panel. And as you can see, when I'm done, I just take that domed blending foam, put it back in my container, and put it away. Again, there's excess glaze on this, so I'm just gonna buff that away with a cloth. And then we can go ahead and adhere our button to our panel. Now our button is shiny, and if you want it to stick a little bit better with a little bit more friction, I'm just using a sanding block to roughen up the sides of the button. So there are a lot of optional things that you don't have to do. I'm just sharing my full process with you because this is how I like to think while I'm making a card. I like to not only complicate it, but I also feel like I am making a quality card that is going to hold together well for the long run. At this point, I realized I should probably do the sentiment first. I didn't wanna do a sentiment strip that I would adhere later because that might catch with the spinning mechanism. So I went ahead and used some embossing tool to keep the stray powders from sticking to the ink and to the glaze that I put down. And that worked pretty well. And we're just gonna emboss the sentiment. So I'm gonna test out my spinner and it works out great. So we're gonna go ahead and add some more adhesive and glue our globe down. And that finishes our spinner portion of this card. It's so easy with a button. And if you don't wanna use a button, you can stack the same size die cut and just make it as tall or as wide as you want. And that will make a quick and easy spinner card as well. Last but not least, I'm adhering my spinner card to a card base and we have a nice 1 8 inch mat all the way around the card and we have a fun spinner card. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested in any of the products that I use, be sure to check out the links below as everything will be linked for your convenience. And be sure to check out the blog post too for more details on the colors that I used as well as Copic combinations. If you did enjoy this video, I'd be thrilled if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. I'm gonna link two more videos for you to view if you'd like to see more. Otherwise, I hope you all have a great day. Bye everyone.